Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis video number two. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about the structure of an Excel file. Now, in last video, we downloaded the Excel file, and you want to go down to the taskbar, click the File Explorer icon. And then on the left, navigate to the folder we created last video with your name, Business 210 Excel Statistics. And we only have one file so far in this class. I'm going to open it by double clicking. Now, when the file opens, this Sheet tab is showing because this is where I left off the last time I saved the file. And really, the first topic we want to talk about is how do we navigate through all the sheets? Well, last video, we saw the first method and the easiest. We simply click on a particular sheet, and that activates the sheet. When you have a worksheet selected, that's called the active sheet. Now, I want you to keep your eye on this active sheet, because the worksheet scroll arrows will show more existing sheets from the right. Now, this is the first worksheet, so if I click the left, it doesn't do anything. But if I click the right, one, two, I can see new sheets being exposed but the active sheet does not move. Now we can go back to the left. It's exposing sheets on this side, while the active sheet remains active. Now there's dot, dot, dot on either side of the sheets. And watch what happens. Right now, there's one sheet that's not showing. And when I click dot, dot, dot on the left, it activates the next sheet on the left, making it the active sheet. Similarly, on this side, the worksheet that's not showing is called Structure. So when I click this, bam, it makes that the active sheet. Now, when you have lots of sheets, the best way to jump to whatever sheet you want is to take your mouse and over the worksheet scroll arrows, right click. By right clicking, it opens up the Activate dialog box. And you can select any worksheet, click OK, and instantly that's the active sheet. Right click. I want to go to Structure, so I'm going to click that one, click OK. I'm also going to use the scroll arrow to show a few of the sheets from the left. Now, we talked a lot about the worksheet tabs, but now we want to talk about the worksheet. And fundamentally, it's a two-dimensional grid. Columns are represented by letters. Rows are represented by numbers. The intersection of a column and row, that's called a cell. That's cell D19. Now I can take my selection cursor and select cell F7. And if I look up in the name box, sure enough, it tells me that cell address is F7. When I select B8, column B, row 8. Now you can use the scroll bar or arrows to actually move and show more cells below. Also the horizontal scroll bar and arrows. Now the amazing thing is on this sheet right here, there's 17 billion cells. If I come over to this sheet, there's 17 billion more cells. Now, we're never going to use all those cells. But all those cells together are called the worksheet. Now, the name of the worksheet is in the Sheet tab. And all of the Sheet tabs or worksheets together make up the Excel workbook file. Up in the title bar, that's the name of our Excel workbook file. So the terminology, column, row, the intersection is a cell. All the cells together make up a worksheet. And all of the worksheets with the sheet tab names make up the Excel workbook file. Now there's some notes over here. And this last one says, we actually have a keyboard to move the active sheet. Control page down moves the active sheet one to the right. And page up moves to the left. So I'm going to try it. I'll try Control page up moving the active sheet to the left. Now I'll do Control page down, moving the active sheet to the right. And we'll stop on conventions. Now the Sheet tab fill color conventions that I'll use for all of our worksheets, yellow means information like on conventions. The blue one means you work on this sheet. So in just a moment, we'll go over to Data and Alignment. And I'll actually have you create your first formula here and here. Now notice the cells don't have anything because you haven't worked on this sheet to create the formula. But I also have a red sheet. And this sheet shows you exactly how I finished the file after filming the video. And this will be helpful, because sometimes watching the video and following along, maybe you didn't get it, 
But if you look at the red sheet, you can see exactly how I completed it after I finished the video. So back over on conventions, those are the color conventions for all the sheets. Now for data sets like this, here's some raw data. Here's cells with formulas, field names. That's a label for this calculation. And this is a formula input. So I'll use dark blue most of the time for field names. I'll use dark blue for a label for a particular calculation. This green color means that there are formulas in the cells. And red means the label above a formula input. And then I'll use no fill color for the raw data or formula inputs. When you don't see a fill color, that means, hey, we can change these numbers and the results will update. Because these are formulas, we can change this to 10%. And watch what happens over here when I hit Enter. Instantly, everything updates. Similarly, if the sales are really 200, I simply type 200 and hit Enter. So those are the coloring conventions that I'll use most of the time. Now I'm going to click back on the structure sheet because I forgot to talk about ribbons and the quick access toolbar. Now I have my ribbons collapsed. If you come over to any one of these tabs, I'm going to right click the Home tab and uncheck Collapse the Ribbon. Now the keyboard to show and hide the active tab in the ribbon is Control F1. It's a toggle. It'll hide and show whatever the active tab in the ribbon is. Now this ribbon is made up of the Home tab, Insert, Data, and other tabs. If we click on the Insert tab in the Excel ribbon, we can see different groups. This is the Tables group. This is where we go to insert a pivot table. Over here, this is the Charts group. This is where we go to insert a column chart. If we go over to the Data tab in the Excel ribbon, the Get and Transform group is where we go to import different types of data. For example, this is the button we click when we want to import CSV, or Comma Separated Value Data. Now, in addition to there being lots of commands in the various tabs in the Excel ribbon, there's also something called a Quick Access Toolbar. Now, by default, it doesn't show any buttons. This is the Save Toolbar, but right there, there could be a Quick Access Toolbar. And the way it works is you go through all the ribbon tabs and for the commands that you use all the time, like let's say fill color, you can right click, add to quick access toolbar, and bam, there it is, your first button in the quack. Then you get to go through all the different tabs, right clicking and sending to the quick access toolbar to build your own custom quack. Now the advantage is, well, notice that the fill button is on the home. But if I'm working in data, I don't have to go back to home because my favorite option is right there in the Quack. So no matter where you're working, the Quick Access Toolbar is always showing. And it gets better. You can click the drop down, down to More Commands. This opens up Excel Options. Quick Access Toolbar is selected. And choose Commands From from the drop down. You select All Commands. And there it is. There's every single possible command in Excel. So you select the items you want, click Add, go through the list. When you're done, then you click OK. Now here's all the commands that I put in my Quat. Now you can show the Quat below or above the ribbon. Click the drop down and point to Show Below Ribbon. I don't like my Quat down here, so right click Show Above the Ribbon. Now next, we want to go over to the sheet Data and Alignment. Now in the Excel worksheet, we can have these different data types, text, number, a logical or Boolean value, that's a true or false, errors, and empty cells. And here's the default alignment for all of them. If we try an example, I'll type the word Excel and hit Enter. Immediately, the default left alignment tells me that Excel thinks that that is a text value. If I type the number 43 and Enter, immediately the default right alignment tells me that Excel thinks this is a number value. If I type a Boolean, I'll type the word true, and I'm going to hit Tab because I want to put the thing in the cell and move to the right. And then I'll type false and Enter. In both cases, that logical or Boolean value was automatically centered and capitalized. Now, we're going to do our first formula here. And this is terrible. Our first formula is going to be an error. 
And in Excel, when you want to create a formula, the first character in the cell has to be an equal sign. Now I want to get the formula input 43. So I take my selection cursor and click on cell C3. The division operator is forward slash. And I want to do something terrible here. I'm going to divide by 0. Now I'm going to hit Tab, because I want to put that formula in the cell and immediately move to the right. And sure enough, it's polite. It gives us a divide by 0 error. Error values are centered and capitalized. Now let's do another error, and this is a common mistake. I want to do equal sign, take a number, and we don't do this on purpose, but sometimes we accidentally do a math operator like plus, and we click on a cell that has a text value. Well, this isn't allowed. You can't add numbers to text. So when I hit Enter, it's polite. It gives me a value error, which says that one of the inputs is incorrect. That error can also mean that something you entered into a built-in function is not correct. And finally, we have empty cells. And it's not really a data type, but it is something that we have to deal with. Now, the reason that all of this alignment is so important is because it'll help us to track down errors. Now, we have two examples of a column of numbers. This one right here, we downloaded these numbers from the company website. And here, we downloaded the numbers from the company database. The default alignment is a visual cue to tell you what type of data Excel thinks this is. Excel thinks these are numbers, but Excel thinks these are text values. And text numbers do not work in most formulas. So let's just try to add both of these columns and see what happens. Now, instead of going up to the Home Ribbon tab and over to the Editing and click the Auto Sum button to put in the Sum function, we're going to use the keyboard. And by the way, if you hover over the Auto Sum button, there it is, right in the screen tip. It tells you what the keyboard is. Now, there is over 450 different functions in Excel. And actually, in this class, we're going to use a lot of different functions. But the Sum function is the only one that has its own keyboard. So we're going to try this. I've selected cell B18. And now I'm going to use the keyboard Alt equals. There's an equal sign that tells Excel this is a formula. There's a built-in function called sum, open and close parentheses, and then the range of cells that contain our numbers. Now, as long as the dancing ants are dancing around your range, you're in cell reference point mode. Now, when we did Alt equals, these are numbers, so Excel guessed correctly. If it didn't guess correctly, all you have to do is redirect with your selection cursor until you get the correct range. All right, so we have the correct range. And when I hit Enter, that formula works. The sum function is programmed to add numbers. But now let's try this over here. Alt equals what? The sum function didn't even try to grab these because those are text numbers. It actually hunted and tried to find the nearest number which is completely not what we want. But luckily, the dancing ants are moving so we can redirect it. But when I hit Enter, I get 0. That sum function is programmed to ignore text values. But we didn't even need to get this far, because the visual cue was there up front, letting us know that there was trouble with these numbers. Now I want to scroll down. I'm going to roll the wheel on my mouse. And here's a template where we're entering the date units cost, units sold price, and we're creating a formula. And I want to show you one of the common mistakes that people make out in the working world. And it's because they do not know the default alignment is helpful. They'll highlight, go up to the Home Ribbon tab, and in the Alignment group, they'll center everything. As soon as you do that, you lose your visual cue. So if you create a formula down here, F2 to put the formula in edit mode. Well, I can see that the formula is looking at both of those numbers. So why is it coming up with 192? Without that visual cue, we don't really know. Now I'm going to use the keyboard to undo, which is Control-Z. So I did it once and then twice. Right here, we have a visual cue. Also here. Another way that this comes into play is if you enter a number, 
and you put too many decimals or an extra dollar sign or a space, when you hit Enter, that left alignment immediately tells you that Excel thinks this is text, and this is a mistake. In this case, we simply remove the decimal, and bam, the number is a number again. The right default alignment is our visual cue. Also, for dates and times, which are numbers, if you enter 1 slash 8 slash 15 and enter, there's the visual cue. So you immediately edit, and bam, now it's back to a number. All right, so here are the alignments for our different types of data. And keep everything as the default alignment so we have our visual cues. Now we want to go over to the sheet Keyboards. Now keyboards matter. If you're a business student and working in accounting or finance or statistics or data analysis, this is the keyboard that you want. Now the truth is, is a lot of us have to use laptops. But with a laptop, we don't have a 10 key to enter our numeric data. And with a laptop, it's not as easy to access the function keys. Now these function keys allow us to do a lot of things quickly in Excel and other programs for that matter. If you're on a laptop, you might have to use the FN or FX key. So you'd have to hold this down and then press the F keys at the top. Now I have my laptop at home, and I love it. But I plug a standard keyboard into it so I have access to 10 key and the F keys. Now let's scroll down. Now keyboard shortcuts are fast. And in this class, we're going to learn a lot of keyboards. Now if we have a column of revenue and we want to figure out how tall it is, I don't want to scroll down manually. I want to jump down automatically. To do that, we use the keyboard Control Down Arrow. Now Control Down Arrow stops in the last bit of data right before the first empty cell. Control Up Arrow will get us back to the top. If instead of jumping to the bottom, we want to select everything, then we use the keyboard Control Shift down arrow. Now if our goal is to format these with a number formatting, instead of right click Format Cells, we can use the keyboard Control-1. Now Control-1 is great because it opens up Format Cells when we have cells selected. That keyboard will also open up the Task Pane to format charts when a chart is selected. Now I'm going to select Number, use a comma, two decimals, and that negative number is fine. Click OK. Now if our goal is to add this column, we can use the keyboard for the sum function, Alt equals. It didn't guess right. But instead of clicking and dragging, we don't want to do that because that takes forever. We can use Control Shift Down Arrow. Now I want to jump back to the active cell where that formula is. So I use the keyboard, Control Backspace. Now I don't want to hit Enter and put the formula in the cell and select the cell below, because my next task is to format this cell. So to enter the formula and keep the cell selected, I use Control-Enter. Now I use Control-1 to open up Format Cells. And I'm going to add currency to show a dollar sign. Click OK. Now we'll learn a lot of keyboards in this class. I have some notes here of a sort of preview of things to come, if you want to look through it. Now, the last topic is I want to click on the sheet What Excel Does. Now, of course, we're going to be doing a lot of things in this class. But broadly speaking, Excel does three things. It can hold data. And notice I didn't say store data. We store data in a database. And then from the database or websites, we get the data and bring it into Excel to hold it. And then from that data, we can make calculations like F2. We can use, instead of the sum function, the average function to take all those numbers, add them up, and divide by the count. We can also go from this data, performing data analysis to create tabular, graphical, and other types of useful information. So broadly speaking, Excel can hold data, make calculations, and perform data analysis. All right, so in this video, we talked about what Excel can do why keyboards are so amazing, how default alignment can help us, and we talked a lot about the structure of Excel. All right, next video, we're going to talk all about worksheet formulas. All right, we'll see you next video.